a nod. That's all it is. Just a, a, just a quick nod, and it's basically saying it has a number of meanings. Like I said, it's saying hello, how are you, and it also shows a sign of respect. If you pass by somebody, another Hispanic, and don't give them a head nod, they see that as a sign of disrespect. And they kind of look at you like, you know, why didn't you give me my head nod back? Why didn't you say hi to me back? It'd be the same as saying, hey, how are you? And you're not responding to me and be a sign of disrespect. And what's the opinion of someone who is not Hispanic who does not do the head nod? Then is that more tolerated? I think it'd be more tolerated because then they they would have they would know the difference you know of how to communicate they wouldn't know how to communicate with that other culture yeah. like if I did it to somebody as Caucasian such as Troy he would not know what it meant and I could not get mad at him for not doing it back because I know that he doesn't know that that's part of yes, my I culture. Do. <laughs> well, well now, now you do Troy now you do, but yeah, it, I knew that when I was like nine. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean he I mean if he did not know about that then then I wouldn't take it offensively because he would not know that. But if it Within my own culture, that head nod, it means a sign of respect and everything else. So. You think sometimes people, when they're in different cultural groups or microcultural groups, that they uh, they think people are being rude when, when actually the people just don't know how to be polite in the way that they understand? Oh, yeah. And it's not just cultures. That can come down to personalities. Some people may just have an abrasive personality, and they may be being perfectly polite, <laughs> but they're offending everyone in the room. <laughs> I have that happen to me several times. <laughs> I treat pe people the way I want to be treated, and apparently they don't want to treat me that way. <laughs> Grace, Flora, I mean, I mean, do you? I mean, what are some of the ways that you guys communicate? I mean, I know maybe a head bowing is, is one way. I mean, is that is is that, is that a stereotype? I'm sorry, I don't know if that's a stereotype mm -hmm. or if that's how y'all how you say hi. Or I mean, what are the different ways your culture communicates? Mm -hmm. In China, if we meet each other, we just say hi. And then that's it. And then go your way. Okay, so the cult so, so the cultural stereotype that a bowing every time you see somebody is is wrong. Um, you mean say how are you? How are you today? Yeah, like they like do this. the whole bow. But no, you know, no. uh, uh, you know, in China, if a stranger to ask you how are you today, I feel okay. That means you are dangerous. You need pay attention. Why the stranger to ask you? Yeah. This is the parents always told us. Told their children. Don't speak anything with the stranger, uh, you know. And Especially children, but I, I think... But yeah, for everyone. <coughs> well, I was, but, when I was a child, uh, uh -huh. uh, decades ago, uh, <laughs> decades, <or you laughs> many, many decades, decades ago, yeah, <laughs> uh, maybe centuries, I don't know. I, I was taught not to speak to strangers right here in the United States. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I, I grew up in the northeastern part of the country, and maybe the culture is different there than it is here in New Mexico. But you know, I, find yeah. it, I find it interesting that so many people, both in China and, Amer and in America, tell their kids not to speak to, ch to strangers when you're more likely to be harmed by a relative or an acquaintance than you are from a perfect stranger. Yeah, that's, I think that's because you spend more time oh, with yeah. the relatives and the friends. So you, so, you, yeah. so you should talk to strangers, but not your relatives or acquaintances. Well, then you'd be safe. Apparently, you know my family. <laughs> <laughs> so, so basically, the way you guys communicate is basically saying hi, how are you? Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any handshaking? Is there anything like that that really kind but of? The handshaking is very normal when you have the business with another person. Maybe you need hand job, yeah, shake your hand. Yeah, it's in and, formal place. And for the closer friend, maybe you can give a hug, give a kiss. It's fine. Okay, so it's yeah. it's kind of relatively. It's normal to to our culture as well as to the American culture mm -hmm. that you shake hands, say hi, how are you? Yeah, it's, it's very fascinating. I thought that was, I thought it would be a lot different. I guess I guess <laughs> again, media stereotypes. That's yeah. that's what I feel like I've done. Is yes, Jacob? Not everyone walks around in a kimono bowing. <laughs> no, not not that I, I think everyone's in a kimono bowing. I just I felt like that was one of the ways you guys communicated, or some way that you guys sh showed respect to each other. Of course, maybe you're mistaking that with the Japanese culture. It might be the Japanese culture, mm -hmm. more or less. And I know the, the the thank you for everyone is the that word is uh, in everywhere we can hear it, but uh, um, like uh, strangers you 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 will meet strangers and uh, uh, friends and uh, your family you um, like that you can say thank you uh, in China thank you is um, is, is some. Uh, 
we we don't say thank you so much uh, between our family, uh, our uh, close, really close friends, because we think um, it's it's don't to say the thank you. It's to just uh, um, um, it's to say to thank you. It's like to the stranger. It's the, in the formal place. Um, we just uh, think we show uh, how to act to to do something real to do something for other people if you want to uh, show you thankful is uh, is more important so so let's let's, so let's get down to the nitty gritty what really is culture what, what is what is it that we're trying to define here what is what is culture a shared collection of traits and values can you elaborate on that more that's the literal definition. Yeah, but I'll, can you elaborate on that more? There's got to be more to it than just that. Yeah, it's just common language, common behaviors. There's a certain level of deviance in any culture, and after a certain level of deviance, it becomes a subculture or a microculture. What about shared history? Yeah, that plays a big part in it, too. Does that help define a culture? Yeah. Okay, Shannon, what do you, what do you think? Oh, I, s- <clears throat> I see culture as being... What makes up people? It's not so much who we are; it's reflective of where we've been. It's our past. It's our history. I don't see culture as groups of people. I see it as a group's history, and that's what really makes up a culture. It's past experience. Mm-hmm. Whether it be positive or negative, it's your past experience. And it's what you know in the past that shapes who you are now. What about you? What about uh, Flora and Grace? What do y'all think? I think the culture is the common behavior, knowledge, and background, and depends on the education. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. There. Yeah, I agree. It's, um, I also think it's the people's uh, different uh, uh, background, the custom in your real life. You will pay attention to it. You will be. Um, <laughs> Uh, communicate better with others. Good. I kind of agree with Troy. It's, it's kind of a where you, I mean, I actually agree with all of you. It's, it's, I think it's a combination of where we've been, our history, our race, um, some of the traditions that you've done in your own families. And how that shapes where we're going with each other. Shapes, exactly. Shapes our future of who we're going to interact with, how we're going to interact with them, and how we're going to approach people in the future exactly i mean your culture says a lot about you i mean if if you're i mean there's some cultures that i mean do not just you know interact with certain people i mean there's i mean i remember my grandparents at some point saying you know you should not interact with other cultures actually other races more more or less such as whites or blacks yeah, you know should only social, interact with your own social construct anyways so. yeah so you know, and they, they felt that that was part of their culture and i said that's kind of not right you know you gotta interact with other ones to really find out what other people do and actually I find it very interesting to interact with other cultures and that's what makes people grow culture is your past but it's also reflective of how you wish to grow in the future and the more you know about how about other people's past and how their worlds are created within their personal backgrounds is what will help you grow as a person or not grow because of personal history for yourself or others around you. Don't you think that probably the greatest strength of our country is its diversity? Yes. And if we embrace that instead of fighting it, we have much to gain, don't we? Mm-hmm. I think, I think we're, we're in the position to gain better knowledge of each other instead mm-hmm. of fighting each other all the time and really, you know, basing our hate you know, off of our preconceptions, we need to tend to relate to each other, understand each other better, and that way we can get along better. Okay. Well, that sounds good. So, um, I think one last question I think we should kind of kind of hit on, just probably one of the last questions. Um, so how do, we peop- how, do we, how do we make people culturally aware of this? I mean, how, what is a good way? Through exposure. <laughs> That's exposure? That's the only way. Expose them to new situations, new cultures, new values. It's the only way they're going to learn. You have to learn by doing. Good. What do y'all think? I think uh, if you don't know 
the people's ideas, you you will ask ask questions, and you think twice before when you talk about. Mm-hmm. I think when it open our heart and communicate to everyone. If you want to know that, don't shine, don't nervous. Yeah, enjoy the communication time. And learn to listen. What? Learn to listen. <laughs> What? <laughs> Don't be mean to the guy. Because once you learn to listen and see another culture, the more you're able to grow into it and take a little bit of the culture that you have come in contact with with you into the future. Good. And, and have, have an open mind and an open, and open mind. It, mm-hmm. it, it allows you to learn. And learning is the key to understanding culture and about yourself. Alrighty. Well, what do you think we're about done? Yeah, we we we've pretty much covered the topic. Thank right. you for including me in your group. I right, well, thank you very much, Doctor Lee, for proctoring this this whole interview. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you.